Gary, is this your toughest day as a South African coach? I think one of them, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, it was it was tough. I think we, you know, we got something going at three for fifty-five and had a had a um, a chance to do something. Thought we we went through periods where where we bowled quite nicely, but the periods where we didn't bowl nicely, we got a we got a beating. So um, you know, I think a, um, Australian batsmen certainly put us under pressure on a good wicket. Um, and created some momentum and, and very fast momentum and sometimes in that situation it's difficult to pull it back and uh, I don't think we bowled well enough throughout the day to really put enough pressure on, on, on the batsman at any, at any time. It seemed to all fall apart after Callis went off though. Yeah, it was tough. You know, we lost Vern this morning when I was on my way down the lift to breakfast and, uh, and uh, quickly phoned up Rory Clamfield to say that he probably was going to play and then obviously losing Jark to a to a type of injury that he's never had in his career um, was, was a tough one. But, you know, that's the beauty about Test Match cricket. I think that's the exciting thing. You know, you've got to be able to manage that and, and move on from that. And um, I thought Rory Clanfield actually bowled quite nicely and certainly for a period of time looked like he was going to get a wicket. I'm looking forward to him getting his first Test Match wicket because I think he, he wants to get over that, that mark. But, um, yeah, uh, tough day outside of that. Gary, can you give us an update on the casualty list, what, what's the status of uh, Callis? He's gone for a scan, so we, we don't really know. Um, you know, we, we'll just have to wait for that and, and see, see, what, see what it is. I mean, he is a little bit sore. Um, and I think he made a wise decision. As soon, as soon as he felt a twinge, he got off the, the park quickly. Obviously, from a batting perspective, it's going to be important. And these days, we don't have runners. So... Um, you know, it's going to be important that he can bat for us as well. So we'll wait and see for that. Any, any concern over Dale with his, with his twing? I think he came back onto the field and felt, felt okay. So it was a, just went off uh, just to get some treatment, came back on now. Gary, what sort of impact did your preparation have on, on this, um, on today? I mean, you went home for a few days. The team went sort of fishing, etc. cetera. Um, did, were, they, yeah. were they in the right frame of mind? <laughs> Yeah, well, first of all, we had four great days of, of prep leading into this game, but it's always something that'll come up. Um, you know, often when we're at home for home test series, we send players home and they come back two days before and we prepare. There's no exact science to it, but you can always find a way to, you know, I guess to, to criticise in, in, in some department. But, um, you know, I think we've had a long year and we know we had back-to-back -back test matches, second and third test coming up. Um, so we didn't feel four days off was was too much uh, to, to give to the players. Uh, they've, they've put in hard yards for us this year. Um, as I said, we had uh, um, two really big days of training coming into this, into this test match and then two top-up days. Um, someone like Vernon Philander actually commented as the most, he's bold in preparation for a, for a test match. So, you know, maybe bold too much, that's why he got the injury. <laughs> but I don't think it's an exact science. It's always difficult. We do the best we can to try and make the decision that we think is best for the, you know, for the team. And um, sometimes we put in a, a lot more effort. You know, in our preparation for, for Brisbane, we set a very strong foundation. We trained really hard. In fact, I commented to the team as the best I think we've prepared in the time that I've been with the team. But we also like to create times where we give guys off. You know, we're not, uh, you know, we, we try and make those decisions because we think they're the right decisions. We don't always get it right. Um, <laughs> but we give it our best shot. Um, how's Imran Tahir's confidence after the way he was sort of treated, I suppose, by the Australian batsman today? <laughs> Yeah, listen, I mean, it's not easy for a guy like that. I think it was a great wicket to, to, um, to bat on. And, you know, he didn't play the, the last test. So um, he was hoping to come in and, and make some sort of perfor performance in, in the first innings. Um, you know, the test match is not over yet. And he still might be able to, you know, do something. But I don't think it's easy for a, um, for a guy like that trying to find some form and, and get something going. Um, as I said, I think it was a... Probably a difficult wicket, first innings wicket for a spinner to bowl on. And yes. especially when you've got um, someone like uh, Michael Clark who's going who's gonna to pounce. He's in great form and he's going to pounce on, any, on anything and try and exploit anything. Is the game already lost, Gary? <laughs> Gee, that's a big decision. That's a big uh, question to ask at the end of the first day. Uh, would you like me to answer that? Yes, I would. Or do you think the best result maybe you can get is a draw? Well, we're certainly not going to come here tomorrow thinking we're losing, that's for sure.
Gary, um, there's been you know a couple of, of injuries, and obviously they're for different reasons and in different places. On you know, the players have been injured. Like you said, Jacques has never mm. had this type of thing before. Can you what can you put it down to? I mean, is it maybe there's been like for example a lot of T20 cricket before this Test series? Maybe the transition, but you know, between bowling four overs and bowling longer spells. Is there something that you can maybe? Put Listen, down I think to? every I, I think every team goes through injuries at some point in time. You know, I don't think it's. I don't think we're unique to that. I think it can happen. The fact that it happened on one day, um, I certainly don't have the answers to that. Um, it was unfortunate. Jock Callis, um, I think, has earned, earned the right to prepare the way he needs to prepare. Um, he's been the, the consumer, consummate professional over 20 years of cricket. He's a great performer. The fact that he picks up a niggle for the first time in a hammy that he's never done, you know, we could... We could uh, you know, go into and do a case study on that and say, well, you know, this is what you could have done differently the next time. I, I, guess, I guess these things can happen and we can't necessarily always control them. Gary, what, what happened with Philander and there was a statement that he was having scans. Have you got those results? Or? Yeah, we haven't yet. We're waiting for, you know, we're waiting for those results and we, you know, we hope he'll be ready for, you know, for the next test. I think he'll, it'll be important for us. Again, I think the one good thing about the injuries that we had is that we've, picked them up early and, you know, you know, someone like Jock, for example, he picked up that niggle and he got off the field quickly. So, you know, hopefully we'll get something positive out of them, but we don't know yet. Uh, yeah, you struggled, your bowler struggled in Brisbane. It went mm. a day without taking a wicket there. So mm. you would have identified some problems or some things you had to change. Well, yes. What did you change and why do you think it's still not working? Well, first of all, I think there's a couple of great players in form um, on the other side. Um, so, you know, you've got, to, you've got to get those guys early because they can, when they're in form, they, they can run with that momentum. Um, you know, we, we did our plans leading into this, this time. And in fact, I thought we bowled well to, to uh, Michael Clark this test match as well as we did the last one. We certainly tried one or two things we felt that could work. Um, you know, we didn't get, we did, it didn't go our way. Um, but I thought for periods of time we actually bowled well to him and to the other, the other batsmen as well. Um, you know, I guess we'd need to go back and have a look at what else we can do, but there's, <laughs> I think there's very little that you can do as, you know, in, terms of, in terms of your strategies. We've got a couple of things that we think about and what we can do and try to change up. Um, <laughs> apart from maybe bowling half full tosses, I don't know, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll try different types of strategies, plan A, plan B, even to plan C. Um, uh, if, if they don't work, you go back to plan A and start again. <laughs> Gary, the, you seem to have more success today when the bowlers bowled a fuller length. Do, do you think mm. they should have done that more? Um, possibly, yes. Yeah, and I think when, when we did bowl a fuller length, I thought we were uh, more of a factor. We might have bowled a bit short initially. Um, the ball seemed to carry through nicely and they left well, um, I thought, especially up front. Um, I think we maybe, if we look back to it, we would like to, certainly someone like Warner may, made him play a little bit more. Um, and, you know, obviously with Mornay Morkel, you can leave a lot of balls. Um, sometimes it's difficult for a guy who's that tall to get his length a little bit fuller. But, um, you know, I think uh, Rory, when he, when he got a little bit fuller, especially to, to clock for a period of time, he, was, he bowled really well. So, yes, I agree with that. Uh, both in Brisbane and here, you know, you've had Australia three down pretty, uh, pretty mm. quickly, and then there's been a very concerted counterattack the yep. other way. Like, in terms of how the bowlers have responded to that, have you been been happy with, I guess, their their attitude when those, you know, that counterattack has taken place? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I could ever fault the attitude of the of the, my players, the Proteas. I I would never fault the attitude and the intensity which they do things. I know they're giving everything that they've got. You know, maybe where we at fault is our thinking. And uh, we try and deal with that as much as we can. And, um, you know, as, as I said, I thought at, at, at 3 for 55, we went through a period of time where we bowled quite nicely. Um, and we didn't get a wicket. Now, that's not an excuse. You've got to get wickets. And, you've got to, and that's how you win games. Uh, we would need to go back um, and have a look at that and say, what is there anything different, you know, we could do to make sure we get those wickets? I think we also need to take into account that we playing against opposition, um, two guys, or certainly one guy that's in serious form, um, 
and we, we looked at him closely in our preparation to, uh, to this test match. Um, you know, and we need to go back and, and look again and see what we can do. Um, Gary, how did Vernon's injury occur? Was, it, was there any signs yesterday or was it all just happened? He got out of bed up? this morning and um, as he got out of bed, he couldn't bend. <laughs> I don't know if that's happened to any, to any, of, any of us. I mean, it's happened to me once before where you just pick up a lock, a spasm in your back. Um, and normally it doesn't last that long. It actually can go away. But obviously we had to make a call. We were sort of hoping that in the time between him picking up the spasm and getting here, it would go away, but it didn't. So, yeah, we couldn't make the call for him to play.